and for the conversation yeah. we had, which was about stoicism and Taoism, I mean, that's not on brand. <laughs> yeah, today fifty views, tomorrow fifty thousand. What you know, whatever. Yeah. It's all good. All right, so uh, I guess I'll get this started. So uh, here with uh, uh, Jason Ku and Philip Stinnis. Uh, Philip and I, we both work at the uh, uh, CSUF Startup Incubator. And Jason, uh, I think people know you from our, our last conversation, at least a few dozen of them do. Uh, well, why don't you remind everybody else who you are, where you come from, all that stuff. And you got about 20 seconds for that. Yeah, cool. My name is Jason. I am actually from Calcio Fulton's uh, you know, business program, though I'm not an entrepreneurship student. I was, I guess, like essentially one because I was very active in the entrepreneurship community. And since I graduated from Cal State Fullerton, uh, essentially my entrepreneurial journey has been starting digital agencies. So when I graduated, I started a business called Search Business Group. We did a web design, SEO, and pay-per-click for dentists, veterinarians all across the US and even a little bit into Canada. But since then I've sold my ownership interest in that business. And I started a new uh, SEO agency called Zupo. And Zupo, where we specialize, is we specialize in the B2B SEO realm and kind of our sweet spot of clients is larger small businesses to uh, smaller medium-sized companies. And actually, one of our clients is a graduate from the Cal State Fullerton Incubator Program. So we're very in tune and um, have enjoyed the relationship for myself with Cal State Fullerton on the entrepreneurship department. And so on that front, I think people hear SEO all the time and they kind of, they, they may get it to some degree, but can you just explain exactly what you do in terms of SEO? How do you go in? How do you help a client yeah. uh, in that area? Yeah, that's a great question. So SEO is, stands for search engine optimization. What search engine optimization is, it is the online marketing kind of channel strictly focused on ranking your website on organic search results. Uh, this is this can be said for any search engine, but if we're going to be real, we just kind of mean Google in yeah. that sense. And so the clear difference in, in understanding SEO is that SEO is the unpaid side of Google advertising. There is Google ads and or you can call it pay-per-click. And then that's where you actually pay for an ad. SEO is where there is no exchanging of money between you nor Google. It is just trying to uh, organically without paying anyone in Google to, to rank on like the first page of Google. But you, you have a business doing this, so they do pay somebody. Yeah, so that's the, the uh, yeah, you do pay somebody, but you're not paying Google directly, essentially, yeah. Right. So yeah. so uh, just like walk us through, just like in generalities, like the whole process of, uh, of developer doing a uh, SEO strategy for a client. Yeah, so when it comes to, a gen, you know, generally an SEO and understanding what it actually means is you are just trying to establish your website and you say, you know, I want to rank for these keywords. And again, these are heavy general generalities, but let's say you're trying to rank for keywords and what your job in SEO is, is you need to develop and build a site that Google clearly sees as a top performer and wants to show their searchers. The whole business model of Google is giving people who Google things the best results possible to answer their questions. And so when it comes to SEO, when you're developing a site, you not only need to make it like look nice and have someone who can actually go through and use it, but you need to provide enough content and affirmation or authority to validate that your site should be ranked. And on one hand, like I always use a pizza example. Like I, I love pizza and I'm like, I use a pizza example all the time. If yeah, Google's, yeah. I know, right? If Google's gonna rank your website, they need to make sure that your website like really does talk about pizza. Do you have content about it? Do you have multiple blog posts? Do you have pages? Because if you were to overgeneralize things, if you have a website and you're Google and you, the website has a hundred pages about pizza and another one has one, you will have a little bit more confidence with the 100 page website that they, if they don't have an answer on the homepage, then other 99 pages may have that answer, whereas the one page website may not. So that's kind of an overgeneralization, but that's on the content side. And then lastly on the, you remember I said like affirmation or authority. What I just mean by that is there is a level of the more your site is referenced, the more Google trusts your website. And what a reference means in SEO strictly is a link. 
every link coming into your website is essentially a vote of confidence or an endorsement uh, in Google's eye. That another website would hyperlink to yours is seen as, okay, you're doing something right and you therefore deserve to be ranked. Right, and so now let, let, let's unpack this with like the pizza analogy. Let's say you have a uh, hundred pages that are about pizza. I mean, is, is there more specifics to that? I mean, like if you're talking about pepperoni pizza for 10 of those pages, if you're talking about anchovies for five, if you're talking about like Supreme pizza, I mean like, so when you say you're talking about pizza, you're, you're, you're talking about specific terms that mm -hmm. aren't just pizza. And uh, based off of my understanding of SEO, uh, like let, 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 let's just uh, fine tune this a little bit and talk about like, let's a uh, startup. Uh, so they're, they're building out this website about pizza. Um, do they focus on pepperoni pizza or do they focus on something that's a little bit further, uh, uh, maybe a little bit more, uh, not esoteric, but a little more specific in terms of the, the the terms that they use. So it's not just pepperoni pizza, it's pepperoni pizza with like maybe their brand name to it or something like that. Or what, what, yeah. what would you recommend for a, a, a new company? That's a great question. And what you're kind of asking is entering into this area of SEO that's called semantic SEO. Semantic SEO is a new age kind of SEO where Google is not so concerned now about like keywords. They're now concerned about what they call entities and topics. And a great example I love is if Google were to find a page and on the page it says Simpsons, how does Google know if that page is about a real life family, the show or something else? But if they can read the site and on that page or other pages, you, they find terms like Lisa, Homer, Springfield, Fox, they have more confidence that that page is about the show, The Simpsons, and they have more confidence that they can rank for it. Now, to answer your question, Travis, you can go one of two different ways. If you want to slice and dice your strategy to go back to the pizza one, and you say like, you know, you know, we have pizza, but we're trying to rank for these very specific areas like pepperoni, sausage, or whatever it might be, you would then kind of focus in, funnel down, and write specific content about like, we want to rank for pepperoni pizza or you know meat lovers pizza so we're going to keep adding content specifically in that area however there is a benefit to general to zooming out of it just the simpsons example it does benefit you on the whole if you're just trying to rank for the general term pizza you could still write out pepperoni and all the other different flavors breadsticks to kind of tell Google, look at this immersive library we have, where not only do we have the keyword for the generality, but we, if you kind of like zone down, we have all the different niches as well. It does kind of funnel up to showing you have that content uh, thoroughness for your library. So, so, I mean, yeah, in other words, that their, uh, their algorithm has evolved quite a bit over the last, you know, couple of decades, because yeah, back in the day, it was like, uh, I, I used to have a cigar website where, where I would review cigars. And uh, it was pretty easy to get traffic back then just because there were so few other websites talking about cigars. I had a lot of content on that. I talked about a lot of different cigars. So it started to rank up pretty quick. I mean, within just a couple of months. Uh, but now, I mean, you, you have to go, you have to go deeper and you have to go not only deeper, but also it sounds like a little bit broader as well. So like if yeah. you are opening up a pizza restaurant in Orange County, let's say it's in Irvine, uh, you have to include that. You have to talk about the local places as well, probably, uh, just so that when Google is using its algorithm on your website, it can look at it, look at everything on there to see that, oh, if somebody's looking for pizza in Irvine, this is the site that we should send them to. Correct. And it's, it's, it's all just about validating that they can be sure that your site is about this topic. A really classic example that came up a lot on my first a agency. I work with these dentists all across the U.S. And I told them, I was like, for semantic SEO purposes, it, it's beneficial for you to write a piece called uh, what is a dentist? What is a cavity? And, you know, dentists would tell me like, you know, Jason, I went to like years of medical school. Why do I need to write like what is a dentist or what is a cavity? And as humans, yeah, it's obvious, but to a like to a crawler or Google like robot, they don't like when they look at your website and they just look at your your nice like you know your nice photo of you and your dental jacket and everything like that. They don't really know that you're about dental work. You just, they just see images. But if you can supplement it with content, it gives them more confidence. So Jason, how would someone actually find? Let's go back to the pizza analogy. 
Yeah. Uh, there's lots of pizza restaurants in Orange County. And let's say there's a new one that pops up and no one really knows the name yet, but they want to be found. They want mm-hmm. to be found on the first page. So for example, if I don't know the name, say Gina's Pizza, um, and I just typed in pizza, how would I make sure that my restaurant, Gina's, would actually show up? Yeah, good question. So essentially, like that's the very basic question of SEO is how do we make sure that we are going to show up? But to kind of get more tactical with it, the first thing you would need to do is SEO is inherently a competitive game. You need to see what the top players are doing. So those, if you did type in pizza or pizza Orange County, who are the top players? How much content do they have? What's the breadth of content that they have? How many backlinks and referring domains are coming into their site? And that would be your first step. If the top players all have, you know, 20, 30 pieces of content, then you just need to, you know, you put your head down and start writing some content. If they have a lot of backlinks and referring domains, uh, you can kind of go that down that route. How do we get people to link to us? Do we need to send out free pizzas to get reviews? Do we need to sponsor to, you know, get, you know, links? There are, there are many ways to get ranked, but the number one thing I really say, if you want to, if you're asking how to go look at your competitive competition, what are the top performers doing? And that's kind of, that will walk you through the, the, the essentially what you need to start doing. But, but, but Jason, I'm, I'm, I'm a lazy son of a bitch. I, I, I don't want to go and look and see what uh, my competitors are doing. That takes work. And I, frankly, I, I don't understand it. Right. I, I could see that they have dozens of pages all talking about stuff, but I mean, I, I'm looking at this and, and, you know, not only am I lazy, but I, I just, I, I need to get stuff done now. What, like, what, what are some general principles that I could follow? Cause I'm, I'm listening to you and I'm thinking, okay, if I just start pounding out content uh, and yeah. just lots of content that's related to what I do, uh, eventually over time, I'll kind of build up this portfolio of content that will start getting results. Is that, is that a good way to do it? I mean, it's kind of directionless. It's kind of a shotgun approach, but you know, at, at least I'm doing something, right? Yeah, great question. So I would say like, if you want to do SEO without understanding the technicalities of it, but like, you know, just want to make sure that you're on the right track. The number one thing I recommend to everybody is uh, work on your company's ability to uh, get out there and get featured, whether it be doing interview, very similar to this, getting on a podcast, speaking at a local trade association, being interviewed by your alma mater. One of the first things that's the most important is building backlinks to your website is the most difficult aspect of SEO. It is really difficult because it is completely controlled, not by you. Backlinks are controlled by third party people, right? So if you don't care about SEO, but you still want to rank at some point in time, you need to build up your business's ability to acquire, um, you know, just mentions on the web. So that could be interviews, uh, contributing content on someone else's blog, whatever it might be. You just want to like have that kind of uh, system already in place. That would be the number one. And then the number two thing uh, to what you were saying is that if, I, if you don't care about SEO, but you want to make sure you're doing something right, uh, like you said, Travis, just have a consistent operation in your business or website where you put content out, like just maybe at the very minimum, like once a month, but it, it is very uh, important and integral to any SEO campaign that you need to be building out your site. So, you know, for my firm, we're busy, right? So we don't always, I don't always have time to sit down and write a blog post, but I've committed to every week I film five videos that are five minutes long, just generally about each. So that's about five, five minute videos. That gets me about like five blog posts with a, of about a thousand words every week, but that's just how I commit to adding more content to my website. And, and do you, do you, uh, you know, transcribe it yourself? Do you have somebody else on your staff do it? Or do you use like a transcribing service like, you know, Microsoft 360, uh, 365? Yeah, yeah, I use rev, rev.com. Okay. Uh, I use rev.com, but yeah, transcribing is really important for the content side. Yeah, I transcribe all the videos and then post them on my website. Yeah, because I, yeah, I, I mean, just uh, as an aside, I was looking at that for like my uh, lectures. And so these are our 15 long lectures. And I mean, for uh, uh, online Word to transcribe, I was just using, you know, Microsoft 365 Word. 
Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it took like an hour and a half, two hours to transcribe it. And I was looking through the transcription. It, it was it was pretty good, but mm -hmm. it, it wasn't great. So you use, what, what, what is it, rev.com? Rev.com, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Jason, I also have a question about, uh, you mentioned backlinks were very important. How would, how would one go about that? Would they write some sort of like a introductory um, brief couple sentences to people that they would like to be linked to and say, what, what would they say? Just, could you feature me? Could, could you link to me? How does yeah. that go about that? So uh, at your, in the actual essence of the relationship, you are asking them to hyperlink to you or backlink to you. But just like any business situation, you don't like shake someone's hand and say like, pay me. Like you have to say like, oh, let's do business. Like there are these like unsaid kind of like rules of conduct, but like to get a backlink and why it's so important is, um, let me rephrase that. How to go about getting a backlink. There are a multitude of different ways and it depends on the route you have chosen. So some companies, they're really big about acquiring links by podcasting so they'll go and ask people i want to be a guest on your podcast and so the way that you would ask for that is completely different you say like you know i want to be a guest here's what i can talk about you know and so on and so forth if you're trying to acquire a backlink through um you know contributing content onto somebody else's website so let's say like for your guys's blog i could say hey guys you know i'm a local entrepreneur i'd love to add this perspective um, and, you know, write about this piece and in return, I would just like, you know, to be able to mention that my company and my website. So oftentimes the way that you're asking for a link is never really outright saying it, but whenever you're contributing or getting featured, you will be able to get a website link back to your website. There's very few times you just ask someone link to my website, link to my website. That isn't really a method that kind of works. So to acquire links it is always housed in a, in a different strategy. Yeah. And then for that strategy, I mean, are there particular blogs that you recommend people go after or is it more indiscriminate like the pizza restaurants, Gina's in Irvine? Uh, mm -hmm. should, should Gina's go to, uh, I mean, like a, a food review blog, that would seem to make the most sense. But what if it was uh, something else? Maybe it was an entrepreneurship blog with mm -hmm. Cal State Fullerton. Would that make yeah. sense as well? Yeah, yeah. So link uh, link acquisition or backlinking is best when you're acquiring links from websites that are relevant to your website. So like the food review one would be a very relevant. Now, my perception though of link building is link building is, is extremely difficult. And rather than getting the perfect relevant site, I care more about the... Uh, scalability and your ability to get links quickly, right? So uh, this is where SEO starts to turn into PR slash creative marketing where I have clients, for example, I have one client out of Irvine who is a software development company. We don't acquire links really through working with other software development websites or publications. This software development company has won many awards for their workplace culture. So we have actually gone to many business blogs and HR blogs and, and so on and so forth, talking about how they have achieved such accolades because of their workplace culture. And so they acquire links by talking about that recognition and how you know they've got acquired their, again, their workplace uh, culture and everything. So I'd say for link building, it is best to uh, run a link building campaign that your business can see a long-term ability to acquire many links from. So if you're a pizza shop, yeah, you could go about talking about how great your pizza is, but there's many other angles. You could talk about if you're a family run pizza shop, maybe you're going to go, you want to go to the family business circuit and talk about it like that, or there's many angles that you can take. And what I often tell my clients or people I work with, um, it doesn't always have to be the obvious one. And often the obvious one is the most difficult because um, if you're gonna have your pizza talked about in that one metaphor, like, are you confident that there's something about the way your pizza is made that is that remarkably different that you, we can get exposure? Uh, sometimes it's yes and sometimes that's a no, yeah. yeah. 
No, yeah, I was just watching uh, one of those document those food documentaries on uh, Netflix last night, and it was about uh, Rodney Scott. He's a uh, barbecue pit master in the South, and mm -hmm. uh, his business really took off because he was covered, I think, in like the New York Times Food Review. Mm -hmm. uh, but that that's that's the exception to the rule, right? I mean, it's it's very unlikely that your business, your your pizza restaurant, is going to get that kind of exposure. So you kind of have to go down the chain a little bit. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I think you have because you. I, I think you've read some of Ryan Holiday's stuff. But uh, in in tr he wrote a book called Trust Me, I'm Lying. Familiar mm -hmm. with it? Yeah. Yeah. So, we talked about it in the last podcast. Yeah, I, think we I have talked not about read it. A little bit. Yeah. I've not read it, but I know the general concept. Yeah. But yeah, basically, it's you know uh, the the New York Times Food Review. They get their stories down the chain, and you know, in turn, they get it further down the chain, and so on and so forth. It's kind of like turtles all the way down, right? And mm -hmm. so you go to the littlest turtle at the bottom and eventually it kind of starts percolating up and you start getting uh, more and more valuable link backs, basically. Correct. And Correct. so, okay, so now, now, now that I'm, I'm listening to you and I'm, you know, starting out my business, it's uh, my, my uh, content strategy is beginning to evolve a little bit. So it's, yes, create, create a lot of content, but it's got to be a little bit more directed. And then also the other work that you got to do is reach out and get links from other people, potentially do podcasts with them. I'm sure that there's a, a lot of uh, food, food uh, podcasts out there, food blogs out there. So to start, start reaching out to them. And when you reach out to them, uh, do you just say, hey, I would like to do this? Or do you say, hey, this is what we can do and kind of give them like a, a sample of what you can do or say, hey, I, I would like to talk about this subject on your podcast. Correct. So I will give you examples that we do for our clients in terms of digital PR. And what I mean by digital PR for us means like we go to other publications and say we have a client who we think could be a, like a contributor who can write a guest post and add it to your kind of like content. What we often tell them is like, hey, we've you know, you have you, you know, we see that your website talks about this. We have a client who we feel like can add this unique perspective because you know your content says talks about this we can add this other perspective oh and by the way these are some writing samples we have or this is where we've been featured let us know if you're interested right and i think that's kind of the angle we take is where to distill that down you need to you need two things to really acquire those opportunities one what is the unique perspective that you can bring that they kind of already talk about but not in the angle that you are pitching and then second what is your social proofing that you should be on there Right. So to give you a specific example from my own clients, they're a video production firm. And um, we identified in the market, everybody is talking about video marketing, Facebook video ads, Instagram ads, whatever it might be. Everyone like, talks about video now. And what we pitched to the publications is we said, you guys talk a lot about social media video campaigns, running a Facebook video ad, but none of the content talks about making that video. Everyone assumes that you already have the video done and this is how you set up the campaign. As a video production firm, we can we can add that perspective of how you make a video with, with the ultimate goal of putting it on Facebook. And then, the, and then that was our pitch. And then we said, oh, and by the way, we've been featured here, here, here. And then, uh, and then that's kind of how we kind of did most of our pitching in the beginning for that firm. Well, and, um, I'm sorry, Philip, go ahead. Uh, is it also expected when someone backlinks to you for that you to backlink to them and no, kind of that's be not, reciprocated? Okay. That's not, that's not expected. I, I, the general expectation is that if I'm the one giving you the content or I'm the one coming onto your podcast or essentially if, if I'm handing over either time content or any, like whatever it might be, they need to link back to you, but you don't really need to link back to them or anything. And so now I'm, I'm seeing this and um, one of the things that I'm thinking, okay, I'm, I'm, a, a, I'm a student, I'm starting a business, maybe it is that pizza restaurant, you know. Um, uh, do I focus on the website or do I focus on Instagram? Do I focus on something else? Uh, the, uh, do, do you still think, I mean, I, 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 I mean, you have a business here, so I, I think I know the answer. But is is the website still the best way to go? Uh, if you're doing SEO, then yes, 100%. Your site is the most important for SEO. But that is with the assumption that SEO is the future of your company. There are many businesses who I talk with where SEO clearly is not the route that they should go, 
And so maybe Instagram and Facebook following is the route to go. Uh, but to answer your question, if you're a student and you're trying to start a business and you know that search engine optimization and Googling someone and then finding your business is the route that you want to go down because you know that it's going to work, then yes, your website is the number one thing you should be focusing on. And yeah. then uh, is there like, uh, is there a direct crossover for Instagram and Facebook and Twitter? Is there like some sort of SEO mm -hmm. that goes on under the hood there as well? Yeah, that's a great question. I think like if you're watching this, I you need to remember this. SEO and social media almost have zero crossover of any relationship. So I don't care how large your Instagram following is or Facebook or how many posts or likes you get. They, they literally have zero value to SEO. All, all the value is stripped down from social media into SEO. And it's like, it's like the same thing flipped. Your site could acquire millions of visitors every month, but that won't affect your like count or subscriber count or whatever that might be on social media. So they, they, only, they pretty much have very deferring relationships. And uh, the only relationship social media accounts have with SEO is a downstream effect. And what I mean by that is if you have thousands of people going on your posts what the, what can happen is if they're going on your Instagram account and then going on your website and visiting it and staying in there and buying things, you do get some SEO value to users visiting your site and then like them liking and buying things. Google does essentially like reward that, but it is such a low like low part of SEO that uh, you need to have a, like millions of visitors coming in for it to actually like, move the needle. Yeah, so I mean, like, here, here's a real example. One of my uh, uh, students, I'm not going to name names, but uh, she, she knows an Instagram influencer that has, I believe, like around 1.5 million. Uh, she, uh, I, I think, you know, does makeup tutorials and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. so what you're telling what you're telling me and everybody else here is that that's great. That's that's that, that's really good. Uh, mm -hmm. It'll probably help drive sales. But in terms of uh, doing it organically through the website, through SEO, it really has a nominal effect. Uh, nominal to none. Yeah, it's almost like nothing at all. And um, that's not because it's bad, but it's because social media and SEO don't have a very immersive relationship with each other. They're more like mutually exclusive. So, okay. So, so one of the channels could be still be, I mean, one of the channels will obviously still be the uh, Instagram account that is, that's driving people. But then mm -hmm. if, uh, if they want to do uh, uh, like through the website as well, I mean, they kind of have to start over on that front. Yeah, they, you can't you can't kill two birds with one stone in this example. They're they're just completely separate strategies. And, and yeah. like the, the the way I, the way I'm kind of conceptualizing is that there's a lot of work that goes into building up SEO at, at the beginning, and mm -hmm. then after a certain point, uh, you've reached a high enough level. It's kind of like working out. You know, you get up to that 315 bench press. Uh, even if you do like take some time off and uh, maybe just uh, uh, you know slack off on the weights a little bit you're still going to have that strength for a while yet and it, it won't take you very long to get back to it is that yeah okay seo to understand seo amongst all the other marketing channels is that seo is the least like least sexiest in that like with google ads and social media advertising they are predominantly paid like they're predominantly paid advertising methods ppc kind of style once you have the money, you will see your ad up there. You will see your ads kind of showing and you get kind of get this like uh, immediate like uh, payoff that you can see your ads. SEO is very different in that it's like planting a tree. You'll plant this seed and you will not see much for a while. But once you get to six months, nine months to a year, you will start seeing the benefits. So to give an example, that client that I talked about that, I worked with from the start of Incubator. When I started the SEO with them for the first six months, yeah, their, their rankings were improving from like the 10th page to the fifth page. I guess that's good. But by the ninth month, they were ranking number one spot on some really important keywords. So, and they've been staying there, right? So it's, it's not something where you can do it overnight, but like planting a tree, the roots dig deep and it's difficult to remove them once the roots have kind of set in. Whereas paid advertising, uh, you know, I always like, I always liken it to a, a bar or a club. Once you run out of money, 
you, you're out. Like you're not the VIP anymore. But SEO doesn't really have that relationship. When you've, you've invested this organic time to build your site, you can you stay there much longer. So uh, uh, SEO is somebody who has substance and uh, online ads or somebody who can flash around a little bit of cash every once in a while. Yeah, and, and, and that's not to add a negative connotation to ads. They both have their merits, but um, yeah, ads is a little bit more like you pay to play and once you don't have that money, you're out. Yeah. Um, just jumping back to the conversation about the social media, Google, it, uh, no, or owns uh, YouTube as well. Uh, so does putting content on YouTube help with your SEO? Yeah, good question. Uh, so the, to really understand uh, why like social media and like SEO don't play well, and I will answer the YouTube thing in a second, is in the beginning of our talk, we talked about how links are so important. With each additional endorsement like you get from another website, it adds value to your website. But what's weird, or not weird, what, why social media has a, a, a almost non-existent relationship with SEO, every link that you acquire from social media, whether it be YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, or whatever it might be, what Google does in the code is that they can read that there's a hyperlink, but the, what, they, what they call it is a no-follow link. They say, I see the link, but we don't pass any value from any social media sites to your website. So YouTube is included into that. So you could you could get a lot of users and people saying, go to this website, go to this website, there where you can buy this. And Google knows it exists, but they, what they do with a no follow, which means we see the link, but we're gonna, we, we, I, I, we know it's there, but we're not gonna give it any value whatsoever. So that's kind of why there is no relationship because you could get thousands, but it means nothing. And then YouTube, you know, you're stumbling onto a really, interesting area of SEO. YouTube SEO is becoming bigger and bigger, but to borrow a phrase that the market industry likes to use, it's still a wild, wild west where YouTube algorithm is very different from SEO. And at, at, at a very quick answer, uh, YouTube seems to have zero benefit to your site. Yeah. yeah. So, is that that, that, that mind blowing? Yes. Everyone's got to take a five second silence. <laughs> well, I, I just have a large okay. truck going by my house right now. So that's why I was on mute, but I'll, uh, I'll power uh, through it. So yeah. I, I, I mean, I think I, I have a much clearer understanding of SEO. I don't know about you, Philip. I do. Uh, and I'm sure there's a lot more to learn. Uh, just uh, since we have a few more moments of time and I know that uh, we can probably go on and on forever. Uh, what other things might, um, we want to discuss or uh, maybe just one more tip, I should say, uh, for our audience on SEO. Just any tip I might have for the, 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 the audience? Yes. Hmm. One of, I guess my tip for SEO is, um, I've already talked to, so my, usually my number one tip is committing to writing content and start the process of getting exposure. Try to go to get featured on podcasts, or whatever. But since I've already said that, the other thing that I would recommend to people is you can Google anything to find SEO knowledge. Like it's easy to find SEO knowledge online. And one of the first things you'll read about is keyword research. And I think many firms and people rush the keyword research process a little too fast. And the problem with SEO and keyword research is SEO takes a while. It can take anywhere from six months to two years, depending on the keyword you pick. You cannot pick the wrong keywords and figure out six to eight months later that it was the wrong keyword and that you're going to scrap everything and redo it again. But you, you can, but you're just not going to be very happy with yourself when you do that kind of stuff. So I really can recommend when you're doing keyword research, one, take your time vet it. And what I mean by vetting it is Google it, like Google the keyword and make sure it's a good fit. There are, um, and I'm almost embarrassed to say this, but you know, my company is learning too. We have picked keywords because we have assumed a client really understands their industry only to figure out four months down the line that it may not be a good keyword uh, for them to do. And let me give you an example that I like to use all the time. And I think this will really kind of, uh, drive the point home. 
when I worked with a dentist back in the day, they would tell me, Jason, we want to rank for cavity. That makes sense. You fix cavities. That's what you want to do. But if you've ever Googled the term cavity, you don't see local dentists that pop up. You see articles from like Colgate and these big brands saying, what is a cavity? And they're all these like Wikipedia-esque informational pieces. They're not really for you finding a dentist. So it doesn't benefit your business's bottom line if you are a dentist to rank for the search term cavity, because on one hand, Google treats it as an informational search. They're not treating it as a commercial, like someone's looking for a dentist. They treat it as someone just wants to understand what it even is. So it's relevant, but it's a very far away from the bottom of that dentist's funnel to get there. And second, you don't want to, as a dentist, be competing with Colgate for a term that's so far away from the bottom of your funnel, right? It, it would take way too much resources and it makes no sense. So that's kind of a very unique example, but I think that's what I mean by if you had never Googled the, the keyword, you would have never known. But on paper, it looks like it makes sense, but you need to do live Google searches. So um, that, that, that quick tip became an entire story, but I'd say walking away, Google the keywords you're looking at and really look at the first page results. Do you see anybody on there that matches what your business does and wants to show up as? If not, it's not a good keyword for you. So in that situation, would you recommend doing like cavity, your Belinda or fix my cavity, your Belinda or uh, not even worry about cavity? Go to something That's like a that. That, that, Yeah, that you, what you propose is the natural next step. You need to, you need to then look, maybe if we add a locality locality to it, like like you said, uh, cavity or Belinda, if the uh, search results appear and they're now dentist, then yes, it would make sense. But the one offsetting thing is, are there, are there people actually even searching for that though? And so that's the difficult balance between keyword research. You can niche it down however you want, but you risk search volume once you niche it down too much and everything. Well, and then the, the, the kind of business matters a great deal there, right? So if, if like the procedure to fix a cavity is like when the, it, it's a really high ticket item, maybe it's worth it. But if it's, you know, like a, a side at a pizza restaurant, maybe not, right? Correct. Yeah. And so as a business, I usually tell clients you have three things to balance. One, relevance. And that means search relevance. Like, does Google treat the search term as something that your business would make sense with, like the cavity thing, right? And then second, search volume. That's the second thing. Is there enough volume to make it worth it for your business to get so that you can get leads? But third, and this is where your business will know best and no SEO can tell you, your business's bottom line. Are we going for a search term that will actually push your profitability? Um, that's that's you as the startup entrepreneur will know best, right? Sure. Yeah. All right. Well, I am thoroughly informed. How about you, Philip? <laughs> uh, as they say, uh, dangerous uh, because uh, ready to start, ready to make mistakes, but always ready to learn. Yeah, I, I, I feel like we've ventured a little bit beyond like the whole Dunning-Kruger effect where we just know where, where we know a little bit more. So we know that we need to continue to learn more. Uh, so that's it, it's a good place to be in, I think so. Jason, thank you very much. That was great. Uh, uh, anything else, Philip? Any last words? Uh, where can we find you, Jason? Yep, you can find me on my website, zupo.co, Z-U-P-O.co. That's where you can find my uh, website. I uh, constantly publish videos and content on there. So if you have any questions, you can kind of go there. Um, if you want to reach out to me, uh, you can always uh, you know, email me. I believe I've spoken at the incubator many times. You can scrounge up my email or you can reach out to the them and they have my contact info. Um, but yeah, generally I'm, I'm pretty social media averse. So if you wanna, wanna reach out to me, it's either through my website or my email. Great. Probably a good decision. I, I, I know what you do in your, in your personal life and it's, it's really crazy. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It, it, it gets wild, Travis. Yeah, wild. Oh yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, you're probably. I mean, definitely wilder than I am. <laughs> As you're smoking a cigar while we're doing this. <laughs> well, I mean, you're you're drinking something out of the mug, so it's probably tea, though, isn't it? It's tea. It's definitely tea. Yeah. Not sake, right? Tea and cigar. <laughs> That's what the thing is called, right? All right, guys. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, thank everybody. you.